Hello and welcome back to some more of our Victoria 3 campaign. As the United States is going for a world conquest, we're currently embroiled in a war with Great Britain. We want to take the British Raj from them, and they don't like that. So they're being really mean about it and, you know, actually putting up a resistance and fighting us. They've we've almost kicked them out of Canada, and that's going to progress. But they've managed to take a bunch of the land from us in Mexico, which is no bueno. We're going to have to actually push them out and make some progress here. Um, addition to Mexico, looks like they're in New Granada. They've managed to expand from that one little treaty port, which is going to be a real pain in the butt to deal with. Um, unfortunately, that's something we're going to have to kind of deal with going forward, because I'm not going to spend the um, diplomatic play actions just to take back a treaty port. Looks like Ulysses is doing a good job here in Canada. We'll move him around and just kind of keep managing these fronts. The uh, With the way the um, front system works in uh, Vicky 3, it's real easy to take advantage of the AI as long as you have a ton of generals because the front lines will just split into a ton of different front lines and you can just kind of, you know, follow the art of war and be where the enemy is not and overwhelm them. But hopefully that is something they're going to, the devs being the they, are going to look forward in the future. That's been the track record with Paradox Games. Anywho, we're just kind of watching our, our generals move forward, trying to get this war done and keep colonizing in Oceania. Kind of want to expand down there and get towards the uh, West Indies, or the East Indies. The West Indies is the Caribbean. That way we can get their nice rub rubber. Doesn't help that we have... Um, this revolutionary Columbia down here. That's going to happen more and more as we get more and more puppets. We'll have to put down the rebellions because the AI is terrible at managing their nations. But I guess I can't really <laughs> rip on the AI too much since uh, if anyone watched me play the Poon Job, I had about 10 rebellions in that one. But for this playthrough, we're going on speed 3, so it's unlikely that that'll be as much of an issue. Um, full transparency, I'm uh, recording this after the fact. This is no longer a live commentary, and that is probably part of the reason why this um, audio track might sound different than the episodes that are before and after it. Um, the reason for that being that I got a new microphone um, over the holiday season. I decided to get something better than the one I was using because it was um, likely to have audio issues and have, make me have to do these voiceovers, so... Hopefully that's not an issue going forward, but we'll see about that. So this is going to be a little bit more of a podcasty episode than play-by-play. Uh, -play. Um, and I apologize for that. But yeah, this um, this USA game has actually been really interesting to me. It's been a lot of fun going to a World Conquest, because this is a game where you definitely don't want to actually do a World Conquest. It's not meant to be. Um, and right here, you can take, we're taking a look at how our economy is just terrible. Mostly because we have this government that is incredibly unlegitimate, but we have really nothing we can do about it. There's no way we can get a legitimate government other than picking our taxes real low, and we're just kind of stuck dealing with these Democrat parties. Also checking the Oregon border dispute. We we'll, should be able to get some of that. Um, I can't remember if it's this war where I'm trying to free Oregon from the Great Britain, Great Britain and make that an independent state, but it could be. could be indeed. Uh, yeah, advancing on front. Finally having to pull some troops back from fighting Great Britain and put them to deal with Columbia. Voice of the Nation, National Anthem, woo! It's a little bit late to get a national anthem, don't you think, in 1860, since the actual national anthem is from the Revolutionary War, but, you know, maybe this is a different one in this alt history. Okay, managing to push back pretty well. We have eliminated the supply for everybody except for the British general. I think their navy is just too strong for us to stop their supply. Um, but as long as we don't fight their 110 stack army, we're going to just overwhelm them everywhere. War with the Granada Rebellion. Let's check the war score. Oh, I forgot this was a cut down to size war. Hmm. 
I think to get us out of this war, we're gonna need to make a landing in India. Because as long as we don't like don't have any control of the Indian continent, we won't get the ticking war score for occupying our, our war goals. Because um, to make them go negative, we'll have to actually have a piece of all of our, our war goals. But that all is going to take a side path. We just really need to get control of Mexico. Because as long as they occupy part of Mexico, it's going to really just destroy our economy. As you can tell by the... Uh, <laughs> 86k, 80, well, actually now it's going down. The 80 somewhat odd um, negative balance we have. Definitely doesn't help that I am keeping this production queue. Interesting, Why? what was that big swing there? Is that from, oh, I know what that's from. It's, we're, right now we're in the part where we're micromanaging our investment pool, so I'm gonna keep pausing and unpausing construction as soon as we get investment. That's really wild that it went from... Because we're not even constructing right now, and it's going to about 1k in gold. Hmm. Great Britain's going to keep giving us peace deals. We're going to keep ignoring them, because we want... want we want our, um, our victory here. This is a great opportunity for us to actually free the East Indies from... Or, sorry, the East India Company from Great Britain. Right now, their entire front seems to have no supply, so we can just keep advancing with our five... Yeah, we're just instantly winning, um, winning all of these fights. It would be nice um, to be able to have multiple battles at one time on a front. That'd be, you know, cool. <laughs> just personal, personal wish. Because, I mean, if you can do it in Hoi 4, where you have... Well, I guess that has single units instead of this, but... I'm going to stop griping about the frontline system. I'm pretty sure anyone who's watched a lot of EU4, or not EU4, Vicky3, knows about the uh, the problems we have with the battle mechanics in this game. But this is not a game about battle, and I'm just really playing it the wrong way. So I can't, you know, complain about it too much. Trying to build railroads, because we have infrastructure issues in a lot of our provinces that we need to... These are mostly our, our big industry provinces, and then the provinces we're going to be building some gold mines... And so we want to fix those infrastructure issues and kind of get our economy back on track. Hardlining the military investments. And of course, since we're at war with the number one great power, we want to have as strong of a military as possible. Even though it's really hard to estimate how much of those um, military industries we need, because we do have the conscript armies instead of the professional armies, which is, you know, good and bad, good and bad. But it looks like we're about to fully take over Canada. And then we'll free up a bunch of troops there that can come down and help with Mexico, which will be nice. Going to take a look at our laws here. Going to see if we can actually benefit from having um, a tax increase. That would be really nice. It only piss off the... Um, I think it does do the landowners and the industrialists here. Our investment pool's growing a ton. 70k a month. Or a week in this game. Now, it would be really dumb if I actually... Okay, I was gonna, <laughs> hoping I didn't try to increase investment here. We're going to cut back on the health system to free up some of our bureaucracy. Um, the mortality rate's not going to help us too much. I'd rather get the excess bureaucracy to help us make more money from our taxes. Checking in to see how their supply is doing. It's still doing terrible. It's a lot of participants. Damn. All these puppets. Tell you what, they are definitely suffering a ton here. Considering the British Raj has 112 units in Mexico with zero supply. I just need to stop checking these peace deals. I'd benefit in no way from looking at them. It's just a waste of my time. Hmm. More conflict. Let me know what you guys think about the format of these. If you'd like to see, you know, for big bad, for big wars like this, if you'd like to see the full war, if you just want me to kind of cut between the action, because it's kind of, I admit watching it back now, doing this recording, it's kind of hard to be a stalemate, or to watch like a stalemate in a war that slowly drags on, but, you know, 
if it's something that is not enjoyable, I could put some time into editing these and kind of doing a montage of sorts of, uh, of just the highlights. Right here, we're looking to change our admirals and get them to <laughs> Raid Coast. Really hoping to stomp out that one British army that has full supply, even though we have our, our fleet blockading. I think I was I think at this point in time I was really getting annoyed at this graphical glitch where it shows the Salvadorian flag in um in parts of Mexico that don't have Oh, there goes Cavendish the bastard. We're gonna need to pull somebody back to deal with him. Oh, okay. Good old Ulysses. What a guy. Future president in that one. It's going places. I have felt, I think in the future, um, once this World Conquest um, finishes, I, I'll, I'm not sure if we'll finish with the full World Conquest or if we won't. I haven't gotten that far yet in our recording, but I think after I finish this series, I was thinking about other um, Vicky 3 series to do, or maybe going to another Paradox Grand Strategy game, because I have, you know, 1800 hours on Europa, and I'd like to revisit that and do some, uh, do some gameplay there with the new DLC that came out couple months ago. I guess it's not new at this point, but the one other idea I did have for um, a 53 campaign would be to play as Luxembourg and as Luxembourg go for one of the achievements where you want to be the leading producer of all the luxurious good, the luxury goods, basically a luxurious Luxembourg. And I was going to do a run on that, but I was going to put a rule on myself where I'm going to um, limit myself to only having the one provincing, province and not actually doing any expansion. So doing just pure, tall Luxembourg as opposed to what we're doing here where it's just conquer every damn thing as uh, the U.S. of A. Are they, they're not actually advancing on that front. That's really weird that the AI... Well, I guess it's the supply issue. But we'll still pull somebody off one of our fronts here. at the economy. One day we'll get these coal mines done. One day. Don't know about the naval bases, though. Those those probably should not be built until after the war. But we'll see if I'm actually doing that. Or if I just kind of force them through. The railways are important. We should move those up to the top. Yeah, there we go. Past me. Let's go. Hopefully this proportional taxation finishes real soon. If we get lucky with 16%, that would just make this war so much easier. Don't fire, Ulysses. Yeah, keep him. Oh, and we got lucky. <laughs> Woo. I probably should have um, watched this back so I knew it was all going to happen before I uh, did this voice over. But screw it. I'm committed at this point. About to overthrow revolutionary Colombia, the uppity Central Americans. I wonder, I don't remember if, no, Venezuela is the oil rich company. I don't think Colombia gets any oil in this game, but God, there's so many front lines. Why is his supply so bad? Are they raiding my boats? Oh, looks like Canada's done. There we go. That's good. Also, look at our money. We're making 27k now. Things are looking up for the U.S. Just ignore the uh, crippling debt. Honestly, you know, we're just getting the debts, the uh, national debt, a little bit early, you know. Ahead of our time, as they'd say. Okay, pushing back in... Mexico. Getting them out of Texas. Yeah, things are looking up. Things are looking up.
Cavendish actually has bad supply. That's damn good. It's been a while since we ever got to actually deal with Cavendish. Oh, we got a good event. Let's get that recovery rate. Yeah. Oh, what's what's going on in Oregon? What's going on up there? <laughs> something something icky's going on up there. Here we go. Uh, these declared interests. What parts of this? Oh, need more tools. Need more railways. I hope. Past me is smart enough to realize we have some railway capacity. We just need more engines to supply the railways, but we'll see if that slipped my mind because of this war going on. Ripon's still being annoying, still not losing war support. Man, I really feel like <laughs> I'm going to be staring at Mexico for the next 30 minutes. It's going to be... Yeah, well, this is, this is combat in Vicky 3. It's watching <laughs> these sliders and then just bouncing back between frontline and frontline. No awesome encirclements like in Hoi 4 or stack wipes like in EU4 or having your having your duels like in CK3. No, we just watch uh, watch sliders and hope that our slider is better. But this is a paradox game and paradox games always do the um iterative development process where they improve the game as time goes on. With the exception of Imperator Realm, but we're just not going to talk about Imperator Realm. That game didn't happen. <laughs> That's not a paradox game. <laughs> Our railways are getting done in Ohio. Still have an incredible shortage of tools. And we're going to go address that by just building a ton in Cameroon. I was watching a video about Victoria, one of the um, more popular YouTubers that makes Victoria content, um, Late the Social Streamer, he put a video out recently about um, what improvements he'd like to see to the game to like, kind of make it better. And one of the things he touched upon is how currently with the way that the building works is that there's no um, vertical integration. Uh, vertical integration meaning you get like a throughput bonus from having like an iron industry um, in the same provinces that you have a, um, a steel mill. So, like, the goods are close, so the, since the steel mill can readily get iron, it produces more. That doesn't currently exist in the game, so all that really matters when you make industry is infrastructure and then population. And, oh damn, we are in deficit. It's a really bad deficit. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, this was really frustrating. What happened here is that we had a negative tick of our economy and it was like a really large negative tick and we had we went under our um our loan limit by like 60k and when you're on you're, when you're in deficit your gdp starts going down you start losing money and when that happens um the amount of loans you can have also decreases so we were in a situation where we were making money but since our our loan cap kept going down and down. We weren't making enough to get out of the deficit despite being in, in the positive. And so what I have to end up doing here, I think, is cut back on wages to catch back up to the deficit before my GDP just tanks. Which is, you know, totally an avoid avoidable situation. I could just cut back on my construction goods and actually benefit from this. But I don't do that. I just keep plowing forward like an ignorant fool. Another way this game could be improved in full podcast mode here now is that really what I'm doing this whole game shouldn't be possible. Like, there should be more negative repercussions for from having 999 infamy for the entire game than just nations hate you and then occasionally people will declare on war and then also you get more radicals whenever you do conquest. There should be something more to, like, this is this incentivizes this play style, because like the like in this run, the only negative to being at war is that it these long wars drag out and avoid and just take up your time to accomplish your world conquest goal. But if I was playing like say France or the UK and I wasn't going for a world conquest, I just wanted to you know keep expanding, keep eating. 
and I didn't have like an end goal, there'd be nothing to really stop me. I could still just keep doing this infamy stuff. There should be some other negative constraint. Like say, I don't know. Probably like something with your puppets where over a certain amount of infamy, your puppets don't actually give you money or like, um, you'll have trade routes. Well, I guess you do have embargoes, but they don't really matter if you control your own government, but definitely some more tweaking that needs to be done there. Maybe like you have a political movement that is your opposition movement that wants you to be at peace and over a certain amount of infamy, they can actually stop you from going to war or, you know, hamper your recruitment or your arms industries, but more, more infamy related events that, that make it punishable, that punish this kind of play style. Because, I mean, I know right now it looks like we're in a bad spot with this big war going on and a lot of debt, but a lot of that's due to my own misplay with the way I've been running our, um, our industry. Let's see. Right now I'm trying to figure out a way to cut back our, our income in order to catch up with our, our debt ceiling, basically. And I think what I do end up doing is just reducing our army for a little bit. Since my logic here is, since we cut back on the army, um, the army's going to fight like crap for the next couple of months. But it shouldn't matter because our navy is so strong and none of these British armies actually have the supply limit to actually put up in a fight. So we can just run at them with our pointy sticks and they'll <laughs> give way without trying. Yeah, and here you can see we're trying to catch up back to the principal. We, our current principal is 17 million, and each each week that ticks by, it's going to go down a little bit more, and it's going to be just a game of can we catch up to the principal before the principal goes lower. And I think we finally got the hang of it. Nope, yep, there it goes, 16.9. And we got to cut back even more, take off our cavalry. That's interesting. Cutting back to the ironclads, actually. Oh, that's probably because the shipyards would stop making money. Definitely don't want to go to the cargo port. Well, maybe you go to the... I guess you can go cut back the ports, too. You just need to catch up fast enough with the ports that um, you don't lose all that infrastructure. That'd be really bad. All right. And we finally got out of our deficit, so now we can go back to our full army. And... Um, hope that nothing bad happens there in the uh, five or six months while our army gets back up to speed. Gonna pay our military. <laughs> Did I catch up? There we go. Your principles adjusted and now we're out of deficit and it'll get better and better. Is it better? It should be better. Oh, yeah, the week just had to tick by. Okay, that was weird. That was weird. Certain things... Paradox math coming into play there, where certain things only uh, change on the weekly ticks as opposed to the daily ticks, which is, which is fine. Now that our fronts are opening up, we have a lot, of, um, a lot of our generals becoming free, so now we can actually spread out and do things. And at this point, I think I'll actually need to start looking towards taking the fight to India to get our last war goal. Rebellion in Cuba. Just rising up against the Spanish oppressors. Okay. Counting down the moments until I can uh, boost our building back up, get our tool workshops done. It would be nice to go to shrapnel artillery. I guess we are going to go to shrapnel artillery. Oh, God damn it, Mosi. Actually, it's a native uprising. Native uprisings are good. That's probably the only unexpected like war in this game that I actually enjoy having. Because whenever the native uprising... It just like fast-tracks your colonialism. There's no negative to just rapidly colonizing other than those uprisings, which are pretty easy to put down. Especially when they only have one troop. 
All right, starting to look towards the British Raj. We need to make some naval invasions and weaken their supply limit. That way we can actually get our last war goal in this war. And I think this is the end. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I think this is the part where I start to figure out how to actually accomplish these naval invasions, because it's really tough to make a naval invasion in this game if you don't have a ton of fleets. Um, it's generally, honestly, impossible to make a naval invasion onto, like, um, Britain just using one fleet, because you'll just automatically get repulsed because there's a ton of negative modifiers. The way you have to do naval invasions to get them to work, in my experience, I could be totally wrong on this, but in my anecdotal experience, I found that the best way to do a naval invasion is to have multiple fleets and have them attack um, different areas at the same time. Because what will happen is one of those naval invasions will um, be contested, and you'll have a bunch of the, na the AIs, like armies, going to fight off one landing. And then the, some of the other invasions will have unopposed landings and they'll get that foothold and once they have the foothold you can just reinforce more troops and once you have <laughs> those troops then your once your first naval invasion the one that was contested fails what you can end up doing is wait for the ai to reassign all of their defenses to your successful invasion those front lines and then do another invasion to open up a second front line and then rinse and repeat until you have the war goals but we'll see how long it takes past me to recognize that plan that was a weird UI bug right there. Oh, I guess it wasn't a bug. It just showed all the battles that that front line had participated in. Got fertilizers. That's actually a really good innovation. We should implement that past me. Looks like some people are having good supply here. Cavendish is good supply again. Despite the fact they don't have a coast to get supply from, which is <laughs> questionable. Um, in terms of, you know, logistics. Uh, back to being in the red. This is our home. We are only happy when we're losing money. Even though we have a great investment pool. Let's look at our... What's causing this? Subsidies for tooling workshops. Why are we subsidizing tooling? Down. Right there, Guyana. And then West Indies. Why were those subsidized? I don't even have the option to subsidize most of my tool workshops. Why were those subsidized? That's questionable. One thing I'm curious about that I'm not sure how the mechanic works in this is when you occupy enemy lands that have industry in a war. Before the war's over, like say we occupy part of India that has their munitions factory. I know the enemy, like India wouldn't be able to have um, the output of those arms industries, but do we get the output instead? Do we put them to work or do they just like sit there uh, unemployed, unworking? I think it's probably the latter where they don't do anything, but it would be pretty cool if they had a, if they implemented a way for like me to attack, take over their arms industry, and then use that to make my arms. That'd be cool. Oh, but see, you can hear I'm doing the, the tactic of just having as many naval agents as possible. But I think I mess up in that they're desynced. So I, I think some of my naval invasions will actually begin to land before the other ones can um can get get into progress, like start. The fight. We're still winning this despite having um, Cavendish there with a ton of supply. Here we have a British landing in Africa. It's also very annoying to try to put out these little African colonies because what happens is you'll you'll conquer their colony and then they'll just start another colony right next door and that opens up as a new front, which is frustrating. <laughs> And you just have to keep having people come and squash these little, like, one-city one, one, one city colonies. Okay. Let's see. I'm having to repel. I always wondered if this Robert Lee general is Robert E. Lee. 
It would make sense because we have, you know, Ulysses S. Grant. And Robert E. Lee was around at this time frame, being in the 60, in 1860s. During, the, you know, the peak of what will be the U.S. Civil War. Oh, looks like we got a foothold in India. Two footholds in India. And there you go. I wonder if this is the right part of India to actually give us the ticking war score that we might need some of their capital, which is in that South Bengal. Nope, it is. You can see the um, the British war score is ticking down. So at this point, all we actually need to do to win this war is just to sit and hold these these provinces. There's no real reason for us to to fight too much. And as you can see, we're starting to set up our navy, have them escort convoys towards India. And hopefully we can get our troops here before they take all of our land. But we'll have to see. And it's ticking down. The only annoying thing about that transfer of the British Raj is that we don't get their puppets. I wonder I wonder since it's because I made them a puppet, not a dominion. If, if there's a way for me to actually get them and their puppets. Because all of those little Indian, like, small nations are puppeted to the British Raj instead of Great Britain themselves. But when we kind of claim them, we're not going to get all of the little nations. They're just going to fall under Great Britain as their suzerain. All right, keep expanding. We're also crushing Mosi. Just kind of naturally doing that. And just, now we're in a waiting game. We just sit and hold and hope for the front lines to not become insane. In fact, I think it would be smart of me if I just pull back from that western front line and just put everything in Bengal. And we still haven't gotten these motherfuckers out of Mexico. Leave. What do you want here? There's nothing for you. Yeah, I don't need... Yeah, they should definitely not have supply considering they're just in the smack dab in the middle of Mexico. Mosi's done. African colonies has been completed. Hey, maybe we'll get the hegemony <laughs> mission goal, like the overarching goal done in this game. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah, there goes our western front. We're going to have to just hold on to the eastern. But Great Britain is starting to really get out of the war. They're at negative 25 um, war support. And we just gotta keep escorting our convoys here. Just double checking to make sure that we have the navy down there to actually support us. Because at this point, the only way we lose is by losing our supply. So as long as we maintain that, we're doing good. And what I need to do is take that Oren Lowell guy and stop having him actually attack people. He just needs to defend. Because every time we, we fail an attack, we lose some land. But I don't think it'll matter at this point. I think even if we lose every fight from this point on, we have enough land that we'll actually get this war closed. What is that front line in Venezuela? What is that down there? Will I notice that? How's Oregon doing? They're winning. We might see an independent Oregon. That'd be cool. That'd actually be really awesome. Even though that's kind of bad for us, because we wanted to get part of Oregon to complete our um, historical borders, and they're gonna they're gonna ruin that. Yeah, we're not gonna get the full Oregon province. That's so sad. But oh well. It's more important to get out of this war and go on to bigger things, start expanding into Africa and things like that. Yeah, there's what I'm talking about with the they did this tiny little colony. And now there's a front line down here in South America for no damn reason. 
I think we're going to clean up South America next. Take out Guarani. Let's see. I just got military statistics. Let's go... What are, what, 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 what's going through my head right now? Do we actually need any of this stuff? Get some of these upgrades? Shift works good. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense if we do. Well, I, I, fuck me. I'm wrong, I guess. Looks like we're going to go for rubber, which means I should start looking into the East Indies. Because I need to get all the rubber plantations on there. There is some rubber in the Amazons. Um, which will let us get, uh... Oh, I know exactly why I'm going for rubber. The reason I'm going for rubber here is because that lets us get bikes and assign our armies to bicycle-mounted troops, which lets us capture more provinces, because it was so annoying in this war to have to go back and forth with bringing troops to and from Mexico like, and taking only one province per battle. It'll just drug on. And by winning those, taking more provinces, we can get a wars faster and have more time to do the World Conquest stuff. Mm, looks like we won't be able to get professional army, and our government is still um, contested, which is unfortunate, but oh well. Our, we're actually paying off our debt, so things are, things are looking up. Things are stabilizing. Oh, and we're going to get this war done. Hell yeah. I think I'm just, at this point, past me was limiting the fact that we're not going to get ore again. And we're just going to have this purple blob on our border that I'm definitely going to attack. Definitely. No shadow, shadow of the doubt. Alright, and now we're just going to finish off South America, make this one beautiful purple block of land. Not purple, blue. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I'm actually partially colorblind. I'm what you call a deuteronome. And with that, I struggle to see um, some of the tonal differences in colors. Like, I can see every primary color. I can see red, blue, yellow, whatever. But some of, like, the different shades of blue I can't differentiate from. There's, like, only one blue that I see. And uh, sometimes in these games where you have two off shades of the same color, it's hard to tell the difference. But that's the fun fact about me for this episode of Victoria. Let's see if Paraguay is going to actually take this to conflict or back down. They should be smart and back down and save my, my me some time. That's another thing. Oh, they back down. Good. Now that was Uruguay. Now we'll do Paraguay. It would be nice if the AI. Well, it would be nice if you were allowed to do multiple diplomatic plays at the same time. It doesn't make sense to me that um, you can only do one, because just thinking about it historically, like. During the Victorian era, it wasn't uncommon for England to, you know, be at war with China doing an opium war at the same time as they're getting involved in Africa or fighting France and Austria and them. So why am I and Victoria only limited to attacking this little small nation as opposed to getting involved in other areas? I think a great way for them to handle that, actually, would be if you're only allowed one diplomatic play per, like, region of the world. Whether it's the interest regions or if it's just, like, the continents or whatever. But limiting it in that sense. Because I personally think if the player wants to overexert themselves and spread themselves too thin, they shouldn't have these handrails preventing that. They should just be able to make those mistakes. Or, you know, be actually prop from this. Looks like... I sh there's no nothing I should take in this war. There's no no reason to do it. It's just gonna take so long if I actually end up going to war with Paraguay and fighting Austria. We'll just have the one war goal. Right now, I'm looking to finish my colonies because I want to start making a land grab for Africa. We actually do have part of our colonies in the East Indies finishing. And I think I'm considering snatching the Dutch East Indies from the Netherlands and have them be my, like, control in, uh, in Indonesia. Let's see. Cuba's doing all right. No, never mind. Cuba's not doing all right. Spain's, Spain's going to keep control of Cuba. That's, that's not going to change. Poor guys. They're, they'll be free one day. 
Let's take a look at the markets. Have a surprising amount of surpluses here. Need a ton of furniture and, and clothes, but that's... That's just going to happen. We actually should build those because we're a little impoverished, but... Let's see. Get that. Yeah, get those fertilizers. We only it only took you <laughs> two or three years in game time to actually make those changes, but oh well. Is this really gonna? Okay, they back down. Ah, but we didn't get the whole country. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Well, we'll be back to eat you, Paraguay. You enjoy that little sliver of land. You'll be the new, <laughs> the new city state in South America. Am, do I actually go for Japan here? This would be big. We have to fight Russia. We should do it. Do it. Pull the trigger. Yeah. This should this will be a good one. This will be a good one. We fought Great Britain, now we'll fight Russia. Take all comers. But getting, getting Japan's big, they have a huge population base. And that'll also stop them from being isolationist. And if they're not isolationist, they can actually build up their economy. Hopefully, the AI can build up its economy. I'm not going to make them think the AI is actually too strong, but... The way we're going to want to play this one is we're going to want to just reinforce this front here, these Japanese fronts, and then we're going to want to do a naval invasion right to Kyoto. That would be massive if we did that. Gotta act with the conscripts, get them in the Great Plains. That way we can actually have someone to command. Do we activate the Senegal conscripts too, or we leave those guys? There's nothing else they really have. Every time I go to war with Russia in this game, I keep considering snatching Finland. But, but I don't really want Finland. It's just, it would be so annoying to maintain them. What's going on in Sweden right now? Are they having this big revolutionary war up there? You see that? It's like, looks like the Netherlands. But that looks like a revolt to me. Liberate Izo. So they want, they just want us out of Hokkaido and then they want those islands north of Japan. I wonder what goes on in Sakhalin. <laughs> like, modern day Sacklin. What what is there? Is there actually like population there or is it just like kind of you know barren rural? Because that's what Hokkaido was in this time period. Hokkaido was the wild west of Japan. It was very uh, sparse and unpopulated. I'm gonna raid some convoys. Make it terrible for Russia. Does Japan still have a regular infantry? Right now, I wish I checked that. Because I wonder if the AI actually prioritizes making an arm industry in Japan. Arms industry. Oh, god, China got involved in this. That sucks. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was wondering why that um, Liberate the Sick Empire war goal was uh, coming up. Oh, I remember what I do here. <laughs> oh. This is actually probably a... Well, I don't know if it's a mistake what I do, but it makes this next war that's going to come up now that China's involved a lot harder for me. But if it works out, it gives you a ton of rewards. I think I just say fuck it and start conquering Chinese land because China the thing about the Chinese land is there's a lot of fucking people in China who knew and bit those people in China we can put them to work and I can just use that as my industrial base to produce a lot of good stuff but the only downside of that is if I have all that those people in China that's an easy place for the AI to say we're gonna convoy raid here and ruin your market capacity but yeah. Here's where I just go through and have to basically choose one of these 80 different states and say, I'm going to take this. 
Shang Dong. Take Shang Dong. Shang Dong. Conquer State. This is not alphabetical, which is terrible. Why is this not? Is it sorted by infamy? What is. What's the logic here? A lot of the things in this game. Oh, I guess it is by infamy. Well, no. A lot of the things uh, in this game and the way I look at games that I play comes from my professional career. I work as a software developer. So a lot of times I look at this and try to think about what's the logic here to get this to look the way it is, like behind the scenes programming wise. And I have absolutely no idea how Paradox sorts those conquest targets. I know they're grouped by um, the nation you're conquering, but then within the group it doesn't seem to be alphabetical. Let's see, get our conscripts up to speed. Yeah, looks like all the Chinese are gonna go to Japan. 4k, 650k troops. Oh, that should show a damn thing, because we only have seven battalions. And remember those, like, two months where we had positive income? I miss those days. <laughs> now we're just going to be in, 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 in the red for the rest of the game. <laughs> oh, Idaho has nothing. Let's put a railway in Idaho. Build that railway. Give them, give them some... Is Idaho the potato state? The one that has all the potatoes? Probably. Hey, I gotta push back these Russian... Russian colonies. Alright, we have a single front line. How's our supply here? It's fine right now, but that doesn't mean a damn thing until the war actually breaks out. GDP's going up. Almost cro almost cross 100 million. And Oregon is quote unquote winning their war. Is it going to go to zero, or are they going to actually get independence? Hmm. Losing a gold gold field somewhere in the world. Who cares? We don't rely on gold for our income. Now that's nice. Once we stop construction, we make some money. Great Metallica reference here, by the way. Um, this is for the Democrat Party. Looks like we're still going to have a conservative government, which is unfortunate, but not a problem, because we don't have too much we actually want to do in taxes. But I'm just happy we actually have a legitimate government. That's great. Can deal with some of these damn rebels. Let's see. See if we our convoy rating will actually make a dent in some of these Chinese supply. get that workplace safety. Get those institutions. Looks like war's not going... Well, it's going good in, in, in the important front. The important front's this front in Japan. This is all we care about. Who's coming here? Yeah, it looks like there's no... Supply for the Chinese. Where's the Russians here? Are they on that other front? How's it with our pool? About a million. Let's keep building those workshops. One of these days we'll build this naval base. One of these days. Election! Don't change anything. Leave it be. All right. <laughs> Back to the watching frontline move game. Um, who? What, what, what puppet is that? That's there and defending that. Anthony Graham. Is that the? Is that India? That has their troops there. 
Oh, he is no. You gotta raise the conscripts in Senegal. Come on. Free him up. That's in Senegal, dummy. Senegal. Ugh. I guess, you know, take the northerners. Let the Yankees fight the war. Wait, see, see if I know my geography. Well, I looked at Senegal. Maybe I just don't think I need them for this war. Who knows? Who knows what past me was thinking? I don't. God, that government is... Look at that legitimacy. And they won the election. The hell, what the hell are you supposed to do in a situation like that? It's like, I'm not suppressed. That's just natural, natural legitimacy. You can't get everybody in government because they all hate each other, but you can't have only one party because you're just stuck with low legitimacy. And that's without me manipulating the government any, any, like, at all. We're actually going to finish our construction queue. Which is pretty big. I should put some more stuff in there. Oh, what, hap what happened there? Did I have a game crash there? Oh! Oh, I'm oh, okay. I know what happened here. I uh, I was gonna take a pause, and I was gonna see come back when the war actually did something. So what happened is, um, I decided to go for a naval invasion in Edo to break up this front, and a naval invasion was successful. And because of that, we now actually have control over part of Japan, and their war their war goal is gonna start their war exhaustion is gonna start ticking down, meaning we'll actually be able to get Japan as our puppet. I knew past me was getting tired of watching the front line progress, but that means Japan's going to get out of this war. We'll get puppeting them, and then we're going to have to turn our eyes towards China, which is going to be a whole nother beast. Absolute whole nother beast. Yeah. Our combo rating's doing good things. The supply's getting low. Oil's been discovered in Moldavia. Don't know why that matters to me. Since that's just the middle of um, Europe. <laughs> we should do a drinking game where every time I click on James Longstreet, you take a shot. I don't know if you'll get drunk, but you'll definitely have a nice buzz going after the end of this episode. Time to pause construction. Let our investment pool build up again. 87k in subsidies. Is that railroads? God damn. Yeah, that fronts all Russians and Chinese. No, no issue there. Gotta start prepping for the war with the Qing. Not the war, the naval invasion we're gonna have to do here to get them out of this. Because we basically have controlled Japan. In fact, we're really running Japan out of here. I guess it's because the AI put all their men bordering Hokkaido. Now we just run them down. I think it'd be smart. I don't know if I do this, but it'd be starting to do a naval invasion now while the Japanese army is all in all in um, Japan. So then we can just get a land and get a foothold before they all go back to their province. But I don't think I do that. I think I just kind of let this drag on until we get Japan out the war and then I can focus my full forces on uh, China. Because yeah, their war score is not going to tick down here. Oh, these damn pop-ups for general moving. I wish you could set your um your notification there. Like in the like in you know how in the other Paradox games you have the message settings that uh you can use to control what pop-ups you see. That'd be a handy menu to have for uh, for this game. Alright, time to get a naval invasion going. 
All we care about is Beijing and its surrounding states. So we just need to try to make a land grab there. And then play everybody's favorite game of swapping over your newly conquered lands. Rotary Valve, privately traded. Let's see, maybe you should leave some of those using luxury goods and some not. We'll get, yeah, get Massachusetts and Volta to do luxury goods. And then we'll put, um, every, all of those can stay on precision tools. There's no reason not to. Good. Good, good, good. There definitely needs to be some adjustments to the way the late game economy works because you know early on in these games you end up micromanaging your inputs and outputs but then you get to a point if you're a large nation where it's just like spam the industry and then you just pile into your construction queue and then wait for it to run out there needs to be more thought process and putting buildings where and having it x amount of buildings instead of just click button a ton that'd make this a little bit better i want to break out the spreadsheets damn it give me a reason to have the spreadsheets out and Crunching the numbers on the most optimal economy to run. Make me do it like it's my taxes. Can't... Oh, I, okay. I can't seem to be get a lot of um, naval invasions going purely because most of the armies that are in the naval invasions, they are in Japan, which is now ours, by the way. Huzzah. No more isolation for them. But now we can do the old massive needle invasion. That's another thing that um, um, sh should be changed. This, this barrack system they use, or garrison system, where you can only do a naval invasion um, with an army that's spaced out of the same province as your, your navy is kind of ridiculous. Like... Like, I understand, like, the like having the system, but I feel like for naval invasions particularly, you should be able to naval invade with any of your armies, because, you know, there's no reason an inland army in, like, the Great Plains can't march to the sea and get on boats and go to their destination. That's just, you know, they're trapped there if you don't have our, you don't You're trapped with no naval invasion power if majority of your population is inland, which is kind of ridiculous. IML. So we'll add that to the list of things to fix Paradox. Get on that. Chop, chop. Love your game, by the way. I do love this game. I know I've been spending a lot of this episode talking about ways I would like to see this game improve. But this, you know, this game was put a lot of hours into it. And I've really enjoyed playing it. Now I just have to keep uh, telling Robbie that I won't play Vicky 2 with him. He's Ever since I've been playing this game with Robbie, he and I are the... Um, the Vicky Fiends. We play Vicky all the we, we always talk about this game. And he keeps telling me that he, I need to try Vicky too, but I refuse to play <laughs> to learn a whole new Paradox game just for its successor to be, you know, coming out like this one. But he's going to keep bringing it up until I actually play Vicky too, so we'll see. Okay, naval invasions not working. That's sad. I think we just need to take a chill pill and have all of our navies invade at the same time, and we'll get lucky with one. But I think we're going to do the strategy of just keep throwing our navies at China until one of them actually gets through. I think what I do here is I try to do one in Beijing and then one in Hong Kong in the south. Let's see. Insufficient naval support. We need more boats there. How would you fix it? Yeah. This this naval combat system is terribly vague. Like it's it just doesn't it doesn't make it really good to micromanage your navy and know specifically where to put your boats to actually do what you want to do. It's not 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 user friendly. Everybody's on standby. Yeah, take 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 Ulysses and put him down there in Beijing. Not Beijing, Hong Kong. 
And then we'll take... How many times am I going to that guy? Take low, we'll put him in Xiao Zhao. And then we'll put... Gotta wait for Dixie. 44 days. 848, that's pretty low. Get rookie numbers, get those up. What is this only having 800 infamy? We need more. Are we actually gonna win this front? No, we only have we only have six K men. There's no way we win this. We shouldn't win this. Yeah, okay. I, I thought something weird was gonna happen there. The, the way that the bar was all blue. Alright, send him back into Shangdong. The good news is these naval invasions that we're trying. The battles for the naval invasions are drawn out, so you get more time to send your next naval invasion in. But could definitely be a tad bit better. Just a tad. Speaking of that, we're gonna get our our naval tech done. Get towards torpedo boats and submarines, which I totally can't afford right now. I mean, look at our income. We're in 30k in the hole. Oh, this is getting pup stomped here. We have enough necessary support. Yeah, he's getting pup stomped too. Lowell sucks. He's a terrible general. I think he's the he's the general that's a romanticist, and he's just god awful. All right, time to pause our construction queue again. Get in our motor industry. Oh, fuck, that scared me. Jesus. Looks like I um, I was going to take a pause um, until we got a naval invasion to work. And I finally got a naval invasion to work in um, China. Again, doing the strategy of just multiple naval invasions until one of them works. I think what I did here is I put them on the same province instead of spreading them out between provinces. And that finally got it to tick. So now we have three fronts open up in China that we can assign people to. But most of these fronts don't have people. So we have to try to get our troops in there before the Chinese repel, repel us. And which one of these? There should be one general that's already here. Where'd he go? Where'd the guy that made this naval invasion go? Fuck, where'd he go? Did I pull him off and immediately start another naval invasion like a dumbass? What did I do? Oh, if I lose these fronts just because I'm a dumbass, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna shed actual tears. <laughs> oh. How did I win that? What the oh, oh, there's an army there now. Is that Dudley? Dudley's there. Let's go, Dudley. He's the goat of this playthrough. Let's be honest. He's the only one who's worth a damn for when we naval invade. That's another thing. It'd be nice to have some, you know, traits for your generals that, like, they're marine commanders. They're better at doing these invasions because it's terrible trying to make a beachhead in this. All right, but now that we have a foothold in China, this should be an easy war. We should be able to clean this up without a doubt and just get this done. And we're getting there. Let's see, am I going to click on Long Street again? Come on. You know, I know you want to. I know you want to. Take my man, man, Dudley. Get him Get him in Beijing. Oh, we're taking Ulysses. It's got to be Ulysses. Okay. I guess because Dudley's still fighting here. Look at him go. All right. Do we have... We do have 100% of the war school, so now we just have to hold. We just have to hold. Blah. Because their, their war exhaustion is going to keep ticking down. It'll help us. Look at that. Look how much troops they throw into these fights. 624 just on this one border. What the hell? Oh. <laughs> it always, always surprised me. Alright, that was a that was a jump for me to um to basically say I'm gonna hold on this war and come back whenever something interesting happens. And it looks like Austria has declared a cut down to size on us. Um I don't know what we actually want out of this. 
We want Italy? We're gonna take Italy? We're going for Italy? <laughs> really? And we're gonna puppet the Ottomans? I don't remember this war, <laughs> to be honest with you. Also, apologies for the fucking jump scares, man. <laughs> these, these, these jump cuts make a lot less sense whenever you uh, are doing this in post. <laughs> All my um, video game, or not video game, my content creator uh, professionalism has gone out the window on this one. That's apologies for that, but oh well. <laughs> Shit happens, man. Shit happens. How's Paraguay doing? Oh, God, not well. Oh, fuck. Par oh, Oregon's free. Wow. I didn't realize Paraguay's having a revolt and they're like one little sliver of land. Who knew a city-state could just crack like that? Oh, another one. What's happening? Oh, we're at war with Prussia. In Austria. Well, that's Austria, not Prussia. They're getting uppity. We're still holding back in um in China, though. Yeah, we're just gonna sit on that war. Just hold it in there. I don't actually think Prussia can get to us, right? Am I wrong? Like as long as we have a navy patrolling our borders, which we should do. Do I, do I, please tell me I assign an easy patrol our border. There we go. Look at me. Look at me go. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, Austria should be able to be a problem for us. We should just be able to roll them over. All right. And now Ching's in the negative. That war is going to come to a draw. Liberate Venice. Why the fuck did I go for liberating Venice? Oh god. <laughs> Damn, I was really I was really sick of these wars towards the end here, wasn't I? Anyway, we're about to, we're about to capitulate Ching. <laughs> there. God fucking jump cuts, man. They're about to get out of this war. They're going to be um they're going to take our beautiful Chinese land. They're just starting to actually kick our ass in some of these fights here. We just barely hung on there. But look at that. Look at this beautiful little ulcer we've put on China. I should have taken Taiwan, but that's covered now. Integrating Idaho, I have Montana. I wonder how many how many flat or stars we have on our flag at this point. Do we have over fifty? I hope so. Anyway, we're not going to incorporate this land. Look at look at how much that cost to incorporate. It cost fucking over three thousand. But we have beautiful Chinese land. That's going to help our economy a ton in our productions, if we can just deal with these 92k in subsidies. What the fuck? Um, but we're chilling now. I say that as we're at war with a great power. And I think this is where we actually are going to wrap up the episode here. So we've managed to take um, South America. We've managed to take the great state of India. Not great state of India. The, the nation of India. Or the British Raj and make it our own. We've taken part of Africa. We've taken Japan. And now we have a foothold in China. And then next time, we'll be focusing more on Africa, making the land grab there. It's time to, you know, get control of all of their nice resources and bring them freedom and liberty. But yeah, that's um, that's been this episode. It's very unprofessional. I apologize for that. I'm kind of all over the place. Um, and we'll be fighting the Ottomans and the Austrians next time. I don't know if we're going to win that, but we're going to take, take a shot at it. Yeah, that's all going to be coming in the next episode. And as always... I have been Sean. This is the Blue Screeners. I hope you'd enjoyed. I thank you for watching. And next time we'll have live commentary instead of this, whatever the fuck this was. So thank you. See you next time.